Hey everybody, James Reeves with TFB TV. Welcome to another edition of Guns of SOCOM, where we look at the different types of guns used by United States special operators and special forces. Today, we are doing the SIG P226 Navy, AKA the Mark 25. Hate to say it, gang, gonna be a really boring video because this is one of my most favorite guns of all time. The SIG 226 generally, but I especially like the Mark 25 or the Navy version that has some upgrades, really the most notable of which is the phosphating of the internals that help it tolerate saltwater exposure. This is the Sig Sauer 226 Mark 25 Navy because it is the sidearm of the Navy SEALs. It really doesn't get better than that in terms of endorsements. You have the most elite combat team in the world and they're carrying your gun as their official sidearm. So that's about as good as it gets. I mean, I guess it's kind of like Jordan shooting with Nikes, right? The SIG 226 that's issued to the Navy SEALs comes in nine millimeter only, although it's available in other calibers in the civilian market. The 226 uses an aluminum alloy frame, which keeps it lightweight, but extremely robust and durable, a lot better option in my opinion than steel and a lot more durable than say polymer. The newest version of the SIG 226 Navy has the stainless steel one piece slide with the nitron coating. So you have a coating over stainless steel, making this slide about as rust proof as it can possibly get. That in conjunction with the phosphated barrel and the phosphated internals, as well as the aluminum alloy frame, which itself doesn't rust. And you're talking about a gun that is ideal for submersion in salt water if you so wish. Older versions of the 226 came with a two-piece slide that used folded steel, not stainless steel, and it had a breech block right behind the breech. You would have to replace the roll pins that held that breech block in place about every 5,000 rounds. So the stainless steel one-piece slide, which was introduced in the late 90s, really is the way to go and is the most advanced version of this gun. Also, the 226, when it first came out, did not have a rail under the dust cover. Now it does, so you have an accessory rail to mount lasers, lights, light laser combos. The 226 Navy also comes standard with three dot night sights, essential for those nighttime ops. It's a DASA gun that is double action, single action. That means that your first trigger pull is going to be double action, meaning it cocks the hammer and releases the hammer, and it's about 13 pounds of pressure. While all of your subsequent follow-up shots, the hammer is going to be cocked back by the slide moving backwards, cocking the hammer back. So as you can see, see the trigger, how far back it moves whenever you cock the hammer. So all of your subsequent shots are going to be a lot lighter. This is a great feature because the 226 doesn't come standard with a safety. Since the 226 doesn't have a safety, that double action, single action pull actually helps it act as a safety. So that first double action pull is going to be pretty heavy at around 13 pounds. You're really going to have to be sure that you want to shoot what you're shooting at with that first 13 pound pull. But once that's done, all your subsequent follow-up shots are a lot lighter and a lot quicker. It also has a decocker for decocking the hammer. You can see the slide release back here, very easy to reach with a short reach of your thumb. And the SIG 226 Navy Mark 25 comes complete with an anchor laser engraved on the slide, and it comes with a government ID plate on the frame. All right, now let's talk about the specs of the SIG 226 Navy and get this thing out on the range. The SIG Mark 25 weighs 34 ounces, or about six ounces lighter than a 1911. It has a double action trigger pull of 10 pounds and a single action trigger pull of 4.4 pounds. It has an overall length of 7.7 .7 inches. It's about one and a half inches thick, and it has a 4.4 inch barrel. Standard capacity is 15 rounds, but there are other flush fit options that offer greater capacity. So the factory magazines that come with the SIG 226 Navy Edition are 15 round magazines made in the US. You can see the witness hole there, 15, made in the USA, there on the side. You can buy 18 round flush fit magazines, you can see they're the same size, from Metgar. These are Italian made. Metgar used to make the factory OEM magazines for the SIG 226. So really there's, there's no shame in buying these Metgar magazines. And for that matter, 
I would just as soon leave my 15 round mags in the wrap and just buy a bunch of the 18 round flush fits. I would trust these just as much as I would trust the factory SIG magazines. It only feels right to use the old school SIG 226 20 round magazines. People called these the SWAT magazines. These are great. They've got zipper backs and the triple S logo at the bottom. I think these just look right with the SIG 226 Navy. Of course, now you can get the Metcar 18 round flush fit magazines, which only hold two fewer rounds than they flush fit, but there's just something that feels right about using a German zipper back magazine in a 226 Navy. Appropriately, the 226's involvement with the Navy SEALs is mostly shrouded in mystery and internet lore, but we do know it began in 1984 because that's when the second XM9 service pistol trials took place to replace the 1911. A congressional investigation revealed that the armed forces had 25 different handguns in use at the time. And while the 1911 had served well for a long time, the guns in inventory were having reliability and durability issues caused by their old age and subpar replacement parts. Moreover, the U.S. was the only major force not using standard 9mm ammunition, and foreign supply of 45 used by the 1911 was becoming sporadic. Accordingly, the military began the XM9 trials, which were meant to find a handgun to replace the 1911. The trials had 85 requirements, including the requirement that the gun be chambered in 9mm with a capacity of at least 13 rounds. It needed to have a button magazine release and that it operate in double action, single action with a decocking lever. Moreover, the pistol should have a minimum capability of firing 5,000 rounds with no more than eight failures. The first round of tests occurred in 1980 at Eglin Air Force Base, which is near my hometown. Manufacturers such as HK, Beretta, Colt, Walther, Steyr, and of course the FN High Power were all submitted for the first trials. The Beretta 92 performed the very best overall, with only one failure for every 2,000 rounds fired. Existing 1911s were experiencing one failure every 750 rounds, most likely due to their age. The second set of trials began in 1983, and that's when SIG decided that it was going to modify the excellent SIG P220 to conform with the test requirements, thereby creating the SIG 226. The 226 and the Beretta 92 performed equally well, but the Beretta M9 or the Beretta 92 at a mere $178 per gun beat the SIG on price and the rest is history. The Beretta 92 became the gun of the U.S. military for the next three and a half decades. However, the Navy SEALs wanted something more than the Beretta 92. While there are conflicting stories as to why the SEALs were unhappy with the Beretta 92, my good buddy Chris Bartacci, in an article for the Small Arms Defense Journal, said that the SEALs were disheartened by the slide separation issues on the first run of the Beretta M9. Some sources say that the Navy SEALs were impressed with the 226's successful performance with German amphibious special operations units, and the SEALs decided to work with SIG to create a special pistol for their operators, designed to be corrosion resistant. SIG created the Navy-specific 226 called the Mark 24. The Mark 24 featured phosphate internals and a chrome-plated bore and chamber in the barrel. It also had a one-piece stainless steel slide and a SIG proprietary rail, not the standard 1913 rail. In 2011, the Mark 24 was updated to add tritium night sights and to change the front rail from the SIG proprietary rail to the mill standard 1913 style accessory rail common today. This gun was designated the Mark 25. If you want your very own Mark 25, you can buy one from SIG today for a price just shy of $1,200. Pretty sure the SEALs don't pay $1,200 for their Mark 25s. God, such a shootable gun. Such a shootable gun. I mean, really, the main difference between this and just about every other gun out there, the balance. This alloy frame, the stainless steel slide, it's not too heavy. It's still light enough even to carry if you had to, but just something about it just eat, really eats up the recoil. The grip is excellent. The ergos are great on this gun. It's such a shootable gun.
You know what? I've changed my mind. It should be a war crime to carry this gun because it's too effective. That's what it is. It should be a war crime. So yeah, this gun shoots. Now, I don't like it as much as striker fired guns because of the longer trigger reset. You pull the trigger, action cycles, and then uh, 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 there, it resets there, and then you got a little bit more take up. So it's not an ideal trigger, but the way this thing saps up recoil more than makes up for having a trigger that'll slow you down just a little bit. Gotta love the decocker right here on the left hand side. So if you got your hammer cocked, you don't need to pull the trigger in order to decock the gun. Slide release, one of the easiest ones out there. Not as good as say like a Beretta, but it, it works well. It's a small tab, a lot like on the M&P or the Glock. It's still a pretty small tab, but where it is in relation to your thumb, very easy to get to, very easy to deploy. One of the best slide releases on a combat pistol. In conclusion, as far as combat pistols go, I don't think it gets any better than the SIG 226 Navy. And maybe until we get to energy-based weapons, I don't think it ever will. This is one of the most reliable handguns ever made. And not only is it reliable, but it's also extremely durable. Again, thanks in no small part to the lightweight but strong aluminum alloy frame and the stainless steel slide construction. It takes a lot of effort to bust up one of these guns. And still talking about durability, you have the phosphated internals and barrel in the 226 Navy that make it virtually rust proof, the aluminum alloy frame rust proof. You have a stainless steel slide that also has nitron on top of it, virtually rust proof. Of course, when you're talking about amphibious units like the Navy SEALs, there's going to be some saltwater submersion, so you can't be carrying a gun that's going to shit the bed if it gets a little salt water on it. Not only is this gun reliable, not only is it durable, but it also performs well. The single action trigger works very well. The overall construction of the gun, it's not too heavy heavy, but it's just the right amount of balance where the recoil is minimal. It's a pleasure to shoot, very manageable in 9mm. It also has excellent 3-dot night sights from the factory, making it very easy to use if you need to use it in low light. There's also a whole ton of upgrades for the SIG 226 Navy if you decide that you want to do that. However, this gun is pretty fantastic out of the box. It's easy to see why this is carried by the Navy SEALs. Again, this might be one of my most favorite handguns of all time. And you guys are my most favorite people of all time, the viewers of TFB TV. Thank you guys so much for watching.